Hey, welcome back for another special interview and podcast, man. This is not just another one. This is a special with my buddy from St. Augustine, Florida, the one, the only Kyle Musilak. What's up, Kyle? Not much, man. Good, good to be here. Good to see you again, Cody. Yeah, man. I, I love hanging out with you. Um, I got some cool stuff to brag on you for, by the way, too. For those that are listening and watching, you're going to want to stay around. You're going to want to take notes. It's going to be super impactful and valuable. I can already tell you that there's several things I love about this cat. Okay. Not only did he, and we'll get into a lot of this. He was in the military. Love, respect for that. Thank you for doing that. Um, he was also an intern and had another job and was selling insurance part-time and wrote like 18 grand in a week in his first couple of months. Um, he also, um, he also actually came to, I was speaking an event in, in St. Augustine and he came and drove to the airport, Jacksonville, Florida, 90 minutes away or whatever, had to wait on me for like three or four hours. Cause it kept getting delayed. And I, and I, and I was going back to a party that was at his house with a bunch of people that were there to hang out with him. And then he's waiting on me and I felt terrible. And so we got to his house really late, but there was, we got back to the party, but I love that this dude, he's like, man, I committed to picking you up. I'm picking you up. You know, like, I love that about this dude. I want to make sure you guys pay attention because it's a special cat. Love doing business with him. Love being around him. Um, so thank you for, dude, thank you for all you've done for me, man. No, nah, right. anytime, anytime. I think the, the most exciting part was uh, the wine list you sent my wife, but <laughs> T- tell them, tell them why that was so exciting. Yeah. So uh, my wife and I are, um, we're the type of people that, you know, we'll just get the cheap wine, whatever, have a good night. And Cody's over here balling on a hundred dollar bottle of wine. And she's like, who is this guy? <laughs> I said, just buy it. Trust me. <laughs> Dude. Now I feel bad. Right. Cause no, no, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was- we love the wine. <laughs> okay, good. Well, dude, it's better. I mean, it's interesting. This isn't always the case. Okay. Dylan will totally disagree with this as he's sitting behind the stream yard camera, but he doesn't have a mic in front of him. So we won't hear him disagree with me, but he knows what I'm going to say, which is typically the more I spend on something, the better it is and the better experience I have. Right. And the more I like pay attention to it. So that's a note for those out there listening. Now in every situation, is that the case? No, because there's a lot of places I would just rather like you know, a hole in the wall barbecue restaurant that's like seven bucks because I just love the flipping food, right? So is that always the case? No. However, um, uh, that's that's awesome that that's the case. And it's but just, I am kind of a, bo- I'm kind of bougie when it comes to wine, man. You know, um, it's interesting. You start making some money and, every, you know, for everyone on the planet, like in a lot of cases, their, their, their life starts to change a little bit. You know, H- how has you um, and your wife Miranda's life changed? over the last, you know, whatever, since you started selling insurance? Um, wow, it's changed a lot, actually. So I came from the military, right, where I was getting paid first and 15th. And um, always- well, What I, were you paid? What were you paid back then? Can you share that? Yeah, yeah, I was, uh, I was an E5, um, so that's a sergeant. And so I was getting paid uh, about four grand a month, five grand, somewhere around there. Okay. Which is um, for the military is halfway decent, right? Or no? Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it's you know, it's not bad. The uh, the reason I got paid more is because the allowance for housing here in Florida is mm. a lot higher than other places. Um, but but yeah, so, so I, I got that, and I was you know I was doing okay, I, but I was working all the time, and I was always gone, and I deployed twice, and yeah. you know I almost lost my marriage because of it, and so. Wow. Um, well, we weren't married yet, but we were, you know, struggling. No, but, but how was that like, man? You know what I mean? Like, what was, what was that like to be a part of the military? You're, you're trying to get married. Thank you for your service, by the way. Um, you're only making four or five grand a month. Um, it's good. Right. But we have a lot of team members here that make more. Um, and you've got to also, that relates to relationships, you know, and focusing on relationships, even when you aren't maybe present. Um, well, also real quick though, to, to give you a specific question, what did you learn from the military that you still apply today in insurance? I learned that all of us in the military probably have some of the best work ethic out there. Mm. Um, and that's really what it takes. Honestly, you don't have to be. Can, 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 can I, can I, can I, can I play like defense attorney for a second? Is that yeah, right? sure. Yeah. Dude, I got some buddies that have been, the, that went to the military and they're flipping lazy. Now, a lot work, but yeah. some are like, bro, I get paid. I get to play ping pong and I get to, you know, go look over the water and make sure, you know, people are swimming. You know what I mean? Like yeah. um, now 
I have a ton of respect. I love it, but I also kind of want to, you know, now in your case, you are that type of individual. So, yeah, I mean, I, th I think it was, I think it was just how I grew up really. I mean, not everybody grows up with work ethic and the military is definitely not going to make that. If you're already lazy, then that's yeah. a perfect place to be because it's guaranteed income. But that's um, true. That's a good point. But at the same time, you know, especially on like deployments and stuff, you're still getting up every day at a time and showing up and being in uniform. So you're still doing things that a lot of people won't do, mm. especially for themselves. Like they won't even get up and pick up the phone. How important is that to, to tr get trained? Th that's special. That's worth millions of dollars to get trained to do something you don't want to do. That's worth so much. I want you all to pay attention if you're out there listening, man, so much. Yeah, it, it, honestly, it truly is because um, if I didn't have that, honestly, this business would be so much more difficult than it yeah. is because it, it's hard when you're at home and you're like, hey, Netflix is right there. You yeah. know, I can just sit there and watch TV instead of calling people. Do you want an office in one day? Um, I do. Actually, I'm working on one right now. I have one in my house Good. that I usually sit in, but, um, I kind of like this sign better personally. Well, yeah. Established. What's the date? 2021. 2021. Dude, last year. What, what month? Uh, October. So oh, our anniversary is coming up soon. Congrats, man. Your wife's really cool, by the way. She's awesome. Yeah. She's pretty dope. She's I picked really a good one. Cool. Yes, she did. Man. She, she stuck did. with me for nine months in Afghanistan. So that's good. Wow. Good that's hard to do, man. That's yep. so hard to do. Um, so think about this. So, so, your first couple months um, in insurance, what was that? What was that experience like? Because you said you were an intern and had another job. Walk through your first few months in insurance. Um, it was hard, man. It was hard trying to find time. I really didn't have a life. I, I kind of just said, okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm still getting my, I went to UF, so I was still getting my degree. I didn't care. The military paid for it. So I said, I'm getting a bachelor's regardless. Nice. Um, so I was taking five classes online at the time. And then I had to do an internship with the, uh, with a sports team to get my degree. Um, what's the degree in sports management, dude, how cool is that? It was a lot of fun. Actually. I got to work for the Jaguars, um, Jacksonville sharks arena football team. Um, so I made a lot of contacts actually through it, That's which awesome. was cool, but, um, it was hard because I had to go to that internship at least three, four times a week, sometimes, um, at least doing something. If it wasn't going there, I had to yes. do stuff on my computer at home and then finding time to dial people. Cause what we started on in symmetry is mortgage protection. Um, and I started on the cheapest leads cause I started here with a hundred bucks. It was like $150 that I had in my okay. bank account. Uh, cause I used all my savings. You uh, had $150 in your bank account as an agent. Yeah. And my credit cards were maxed. Wow. Yeah. I was, I had no job for six months before I got this. I'm kind um, of curious who, who else can relate to that too, as you're out there listening, man, I would love to see in comments, like who can relate to that where you're like, that was my situation before where I can relate to Kyle and that's my situation now. And I had 150 bucks in my bank account and credit cards are maxed and I'm coming in to sell insurance. So what did you do? I thought you needed money to sell insurance. Uh, yeah, sort of. So, um, so I kind of got lucky because the, so the state paid for my exam and my course being a veteran, which was awesome. That's cool. And then I took advantage of uh, Jim Russman's reimbursement thing that he does. So if you finish your course within 14 days, he'll pay you back. And then I used that money to buy my first set of leads, uh, which was all like 50 cent, $1, mm. $2 leads, some of the oldest leads you could buy. And I just yeah. said, okay, I'm going to get a hundred of them and I'm just going to do what I can. And I was booking, I don't know, probably eight to 10 a week when I started. And really that was, I was probably doing a hundred, 200 dials a day while I was doing all those things. Okay. Um, so it took a lot of effort, but worth it. And how, how, how were you originally on the phone? Oh, I was terrible at first. Horrible. What what part of the call were you bad at? The beginning, which is most important. So explain what you did wrong. Sh say what you did wrong. Like share like the actual script of what you were saying and how terrible you were. Sure. So um, when I first started, I would call and I'd be like, hey, so-and-so with a question mark. 
And then um, they'd go, okay, this guy's probably a telemarketer, right? Immediately. And then I'd go, yeah, you know, I'm calling you from the mortgage protection department uh, for your loan at blah, blah, blah. And um, hang up after hang up. Mm. And I went to my wife and I said, hey, let me use this script on you. And you tell me when you hang up and what I should change. And so we sat there for an hour and I said, okay, every, every word I went through with her and I fixed it. And now I don't use the question mark. And now I don't use mortgage protection department. I just say, Hey, I'm getting back to you because you reached out to us for whatever. Um, and that helped out a lot, but it was, it, it took a lot of work, but you know, I listened to a lot of podcasts and I listened to you. Um, and I listened to sound clouds. I did everything when I was driving, when I was at the gym, I just knew that this had a lot of potential. Mm. And if, if I want to survive here and make it and be successful, I got to put my time and effort into changing and yep. constantly growing and what you talk about constantly learning. All right. So that's cool that that was the case, but it says a lot about you. Most people are sc so scared to call leads, but they're also scared to role play with their wife or their husband or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that says a lot about you that you would stop and say, it's not, it's not the leads. It's not the industry. It's me. Most, most people, and some of you are guilty of this. When you listen to it right now, I'm going to call you out, is that you're listening. You're saying, you know what? It's the leads. It's the industry. It's Kyle's fault. It's the people I'm calling. No, dude. Kyle said it's my fault and had his wife tell him when she would hang up and how bad he was. Like That's a huge training moment. Like He was so flipping coachable. He took his ego and pride and flushed them and said, I'm going to get really good at this. Um, where's that come from? That background where you're like, dude, if somebody else can do it, I can do it too. Where's that come from? Um, honestly, it comes from childhood because I was always kind of the smaller stature dude. And I always wanted to do big things. And I, I wanted to play quarterback for my high school team and all that stuff. And everyone mm. told me they were like, oh, man, you're too small. Um, hmm. even though I was faster than everybody else and I had more work ethic, but it's the same thing as like Tom, Tom Brady, right? Everyone talked him down and he just skyrocketed. Right. But, um, it kind of came from that where everybody constantly told me that I couldn't do something. And so my whole life, I've just been proving people wrong. So, um, there was one time where in, in high school, I was taking the ASVAB, which is the test you have to take to get into the military, to figure out what job you can qualify for. Hmm. And, um, I was sitting there and a couple of my football buddies come in and they go, Oh man, you're too small, bro. You're not going to make it in the military. And I said, yeah. okay, cool. So I aced it. And then I immediately went to the recruiting office and I said, okay, I want whatever the hardest job is. I don't even know what that is or what that means. And my dad was there and he's like, he wants love and Bravo, which is an infantry guy. And I said, okay, cool. I'll take it. And I went back to school the next day and said, hey, what can I do to graduate quicker so I can leave January for the military? And they were like, oh, you're already good. You just have to pass this test. And I said, OK, cool. Mm. So I passed it, graduated early, went to um, OSIT in Fort Benning for in January, graduated from infantry school um, as one of the top of my class in May and came back and walked in my uniform in front of everybody to prove them wrong. And it was awesome. So that's kind of where it came from. But. Dude, that's so cool, man. I love that. Um, was there something in your childhood, though, if you go a little deeper? Was there something in your childhood or your parents or how you were raised that kind of that you can look back and say, yeah, I was kind of wired that way from the very beginning in some capacity? You know, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But yeah, I, I, honestly, I think it comes from my dad, really, because he retired as a lieutenant colonel and, um, Wow. He was kind of always like trying to prove the world wrong. And mm. I think I just took that from him and wanted to do the same. And he was always my hero growing up. Um, so I wanted to be him. Right. And then I realized that maybe the military wasn't my route. So I chose this, but um, thank God. But um, yeah, yeah, I'd say that's, that's probably where it came from. Honestly, is my dad. What was it about this career that stood out for somebody that's new and they're still trying to figure out if this is meant for them? What was it about this that stood out versus where you, what you were doing? Um, three things. And one was money because hmm. I knew that I had a wedding to pay for and it was going to be 40 grand. And I was like, how am I going to do this in six months um, wow. with any other job? Hmm. 
not going to happen. So I said, okay, so I'm going to do this and I'm going to get really good at it. And then the other thing was freedom because in the military, I was constantly leaving. I was constantly gone. I ruined tons of relationships. Um, my mental state was messed up. So I knew I could grow here, get better, um, and kind of change my future trajectory. So that was another reason. Um, yeah. my light kind of got dark here. Oh, you're good. We can um, see. and then, and really the third thing was time. Honestly, yeah. I knew that if I worked really, really hard for a little bit, and I, I always kind of say this to people is like, if I told you had to shovel crap for a year or two and you could be, you know, wherever you want to be, would you do it? And I always like people's answer. Cause mine is yes. I'll do it seven days a week. Well, if especially if you can shovel crap for a year or two, and then eventually you own the facility and you have a bunch of other people that are shoveling crap for you at that point and for them at that point. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and you're a millionaire, whether it's three years, five years, 10 years, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, that's cool, man. That's good. So let's talk about, uh, so the script, you start with the script a little bit, um, early on you fix that. And mm -hmm. were you running face to face? Point? No, no, you, no, you were 2021. So or when did you start in the industry? Uh, I started tw uh, December or January of 2021. Yeah. Okay. So, so, okay. So about a year and a half, almost two years. So, and then were you doing face to face or all zoom? Uh, I was doing both actually. So, okay. so, um, anybody that I could go see face to face, I tried. And the reason is, is because honestly, it's an easier sell. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just enjoy being around other people. And, um, obviously it was kind of weird cause you had to wear a mask and everything most of the time, but, um, yeah. But I did probably 80% Zoom, and now I just pretty much do all telesales. And how do you like that? I love it, man. I don't have to drive anywhere. I don't have to hop on a Zoom. I just sell people right on the spot, and it's a great, easy feeling. Do you get on Zoom or just all phone? Um, I've done two Zooms in the last probably two months. So it's mostly just phone? All phone. Wow. I don't even go to people's houses or anything. And what's that look like now to where how much are you trying to produce every week as you're growing your team at the same time? Um, I've, the last couple of weeks I've been around five to 12 grand a week. And then um, I'm um, also heavily into recruiting. So I'm probably running, I don't know, 30 to 40 first interviews and then that dwindles down to, you know, and then I'm also helping a team of 15. It's awesome. So, and you can still do it all, man. Most people are like, dude, you can't do 30, 40 initial interviews and write five to 10 grand a week. No, dude, that ain't happening, man. I mean, whatever they, whatever they want the reality to be is that's what it's going to be. Right. I mean, you're proving that you can. Yeah, for sure. It, it really, it just comes down to, um, you know, making time for what's important. And I still make time for what's important as far as marriage wise, because yep. that's the most important thing over all this stuff. Yes, but, amen. but I, I, if I'm being honest, I book her into my calendar and I say, yeah. Hey, this is what I'm, this is what we're going to do. These are the days that we're going to do it. Um, and we kind of figured it out with both our schedules and it's all awesome. smooth sailing. That's awesome, man. It's so valuable. So cool that you're doing that early in a marriage. Cause that's, that's so, so vital, so vital. Um, yeah, that's cool. I love that you're doing that. Um, okay, so then you transition, you get better on the phone, you start selling, you do $18,300 in your, was your biggest week and it was your second month, right? Correct. What did you do different? Um, that week, I honestly, when I got on the phone, I told people, I said, hey, I can help you with whatever you're looking for, regardless of, you know, whatever you've been told before, or I, I try to differentiate myself as much as possible. Okay. And, and I literally said, no matter what you have going on, I can help you. Um, and I had no, to be honest, I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew that I had upline there that could help me. And then they showed up on my calls and it was kind of smooth sailing from there. I booked, pe I booked like six people on a Friday and said, let's go. I'm going to write as much as I can today. Um, ended up being about 18, Grant, so that's awesome dude and you were you were pushing you weren't 
taking no for an answer. You were like, I, I understand you're broke. I got it. Like, I understand whatever, right? You know what I mean? I understand you're busy. Yeah. I understand, you know, I, I can help you. I understand you're, you know, whatever, right? Like, I love that um, that was the case. When, when you think through what agents have done um, with working with agents, what do you what do you notice that they typically struggle with the most? And then how do you help them get better or overcome that piece? Like you're working with a lot of agents, a lot of agents watching that are new or struggling or they're just not doing as great as they would like. What, what do you what do you see? Um, two things. One is people are scared of the phone. And so they don't get better because they don't pick up the phone. Yep. The only way to get better at something is to do it no matter what you do. Um, and that's what I've realized with a lot of people is that they're too scared, too scared. And then that detriments everything else from there. I mean, you don't have to know what you're talking about or know what you're doing. You just got to pick up the phone and say, mm. you know what you're doing. You're, we're the experts, right? Just like a doctor is the expert. You're not going to ask them, you know, when they're available, or I guess you'd ask them if, when they're available, but they're going to tell you, Hey, this is what you have going on. This sure. is when I'm available, stuff like that. And then the second thing really is um, I think people get too into, I have to learn all the products, all the carriers and everything before I can help anyone. Mm, that's a big one. And that's, that's great to know, but that's not going to help you if you have no one to see. Right. right. So um, those are the two things that I've really noticed with all the people I've, I've helped in the last you know year and a half or so. I love it. Yeah. I love that. That makes, that makes a ton of sense. When you think through, um, when you think through, like what the bigger picture is and what, what do you see in your future in this industry? Cause you're thinking a lot bigger now than you were a year and a half ago, two years ago, you know? Yeah. Um, actually it comes right here to the band that I got from your conference oh. and your vision. I wear it every day. So there's, there's three things I wear every day to remind myself of what I'm doing and where I'm going. Okay. I love it. Um, the first one is my wedding ring. Cause my wife is the most important thing in this world. Amen. Um, Second thing is your wristband, expand your vision. Boom. And then the third thing is a band for uh, one of my lost comrades. Um, and the reason I wear all these things is because I want to constantly remind myself where I'm going, where I don't want to be, and who I want to do it for. So I'm wearing my why at all times, no matter where I go, what I do. Um, That's awesome. And Honestly, 8% is what changed a lot of things for me. Mm. And it was, it was being in front of not being in front, but being in person in front of all these successful people that told you the exact same thing that you hear on YouTubes and you hear, like when you listen to you on YouTube, for example, you tell us great things, but it's totally different when you're in person. And yeah. um, so where I'm going now is honestly, when I first got here, I was like, oh, I just want to make, you know, a hundred, 150 a year. I'd be happy with that. Uh, but now if I'm not making 100, 150 a month, then I'm not happy. Um, that's where my project, uh, trajectory is going mine. And, and yeah. I told my wife, I said, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to be a millionaire. I said, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do whatever it takes. And I'm going to keep doing it every day. And it's going to suck for the next year or two for us because I'm going to be busy, but I promise you in the end, it'll be worth it. Awesome. And, um, so, so cool. It's been a cool uh, yeah. ride. And the, the, the thing is you're thousand percent capable of that. You know, I mean, technically as we all evolve, as we all get better every single day, we get closer to reaching our potential and we just kind of evolve and change kind of like, you know, a chameleon, so to speak along the way. Um, there's no doubt you could get to a million a month. You know, I mean, there's uh there's just so much opportunity in the space, you know? Um, and you've got some big people that you work with that are doing some incredible, incredible things, you know, uh, which is really, really awesome. You know, I mean, dude, you got some, you got some amazing people there, you know, you got a lot of people around you that are just really, really, really cool. Good people, you know, uh, which is cool. Yeah. I mean, you got Alex, you got Jim, you got, you know, you got a bunch of people that are just Wes, you got, you know, you got some awesome, impressive people really, really do. Yeah. How, how important is that? Plugging yourself into the right people, finding the right tribe, the right unit, uh, I'd say that's, I'd, I'd say it's number two. Number one is you, but number two for sure. That's good. It, because if, because to be honest, like the times where I was really down 
and out and thought I couldn't do this, having those people that really truly cared about me and picked me up and said, mm. you can, and believed in me, like what you said um, to me before, where, you know, you believe in me, it, um, totally. it, it changes you, you know, it helps you. And um, having that is, is super important. If you're around a bunch of people that you don't like, you're never going to succeed here. It's going to be really hard um, in my yeah. opinion, but <clears throat> I love it. Man. Super. I love it. Yeah. It's so important. Um, what if someone wants to reach out and learn from more from you, how would they do that? How could they go about reaching out and learning from Kyle? Um, got a couple different ways, actually. I'm on like every social media outlet and there's only one Kyle Muselak in the world. So it's kind of easy to find me. Um, wow. which is, which is cool. But, um, awesome. yeah, I have a Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok now, which I'm going to start doing some, some reels. Um, but you can call me anytime. I'll, I'll give my cell phone out. I don't care. Um, it's 904-631-4262, St. Augustine, Florida. Um, and then you can email me, but I mean, who uses email, right? K period. M-U-Z-E-L-A-K at gmail.com. I love it. K underscore muse M-U-Z-E is so simple too. Yeah. 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 I try to make everything easy for people. So dude, that's what it's all about. You know, um, Mm -hmm. well, dude, thank you for being a part of this. Uh, we're about to jump on the jet on the ultimate agent tour together. You're going to be part of the entire trip, which is pretty special. Um, why did you commit to being a part of that? And what would you like to share with others on why they should try to get in the room and around people and, and enjoy some incredible, unique experiences along the way? That's a great question. Um, I would say being around people that are expanding your vision is super important. It changed my life. I wrote one of the biggest months I've ever written after 8% conference ever. I beat my mentor, Jim Russman. I started reading more. I started journaling more. I started doing all these things that everyone said to do, but I didn't actually do it. So after that, I said, I'm going to spend whatever money I can to be around Cody and all these winners because I want to be like them, but my own. I want to my own individual way. Right. So not them, but me. Um, so just whatever it takes, man, that's, that's what I say. Whatever it takes, you you have a trajectory you want to get to, you got to get there. You got to pay for it. It's good. You're a beast. I'm excited to spend more time with you on the tour. If you're watching, you're coming to one of the cities, okay. Orlando, Atlanta, Charlotte, Chicago, or Dallas, make sure you tell Kyle hello. When you meet him, pick his brain, hang out, uh, exchange numbers, get pictures, social, whatever, right? And and make sure you have a blast. Dude, thank you for being on the podcast and the channel today. You're amazing, and I look forward to seeing you soon, bro, okay? Thanks, man. Love you, bro. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys for listening and watching, and we will see you again very soon. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. So I got three key questions for you as we kick this thing off right now. Number one, what is it? that you really want? What keeps you up at night? I'm gonna read a text.